Hello, I am Tato Cat. And welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Sentimental Trickster. I'm guessing this will actually be the finale. Previously, we got to a finale, uh, but uh, it was terrible because Ayumi died, and then I had to continuously go back in time and try to save her, and eventually I did. So now we're going to see where the happy way goes. Hopefully, it's happy. I'm pretty sure it's happy. Anyways, let's continue. Also, thanks for getting to see me. Hopefully, I won't have to censor anything. No, I don't want you to. Jin's eyes sparkle. With a soft smile, he leads me to his bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Nothing actually happens. So this is Jin's bedroom. It's bigger than I thought it was. He also has more books than I thought he'd have. And I didn't think he'd have a fuzzy rug either. You feeling okay? Are you kidding? I feel great. I never thought I was going to feel this way about anyone, especially after... After... I paused, chewing on my bottom lip. It shouldn't be hard to say. Not with Jin. Not after everything we've done and all that we've been through. I can tell him. With a sigh, I seal myself. Oh, finally we get to know about his past. I'm so happy. I like someone in high school. He made me feel like garbage for being gay. The whole school did. Well, not the whole school. This group of girls that thought it was cute or something were the only people that were nice to me. But they were kind of creepy about the questions they asked me. Until even they abandoned me too. Oh, they basically shipped him. Yeah, they were basically uh, Fujoshi. Uh, Fujoshi is basically yaoi fangirls, um, but they were like in the extreme sense to the point where they uh, shipped real people like they did cartoon people without thinking of the fact that they're people, which you can't do. You should be friends with somebody to be friends with them. Anyway, the guy I liked got drunk after graduation and tried to... Well, it doesn't matter. I kicked him where it counts and I got away. But just the thought that he wasn't interested until he was drunk and no one was looking. That it was some big secret. That he had treated me like trash for years because I was gay. I couldn't live in a town like that anymore. I had to leave. So I dyed my hair. I felt more like me, and I came to school here. And I met you. It turns out that it was the best decision of my life. So... We don't get to learn about the flashback girl? Well, that's funny. Or was she one of the... The shippers? There I said it. I laid it all out, for better or for worse. But Jin doesn't look weirded out. His arms wrap around me in a tight hug. Or Haru. I'm so sorry you went through all that, but I'd be lying if I'd said I wasn't happy you were here with me now. I want you, for as long as you want to be with me. I'm going to hold you to that. I snuggle deeper in his arms, listening to the sound of his heartbeat. We both must have been exhausted be because the next time I open my eyes, the sunlight is filtering through Jin's bedroom curtains. Damn. I can't believe we fell asleep together. He also has like a random camera over here. Is he into photography? And there's a camera over here too. Who needs that many cameras? All two of them. I look over to Jin's sleeping face and smile. I can't believe that we actually made love last night. Slowly, I bring my hand up to his cheek and stroke softly. His eyes flutter open, and he flashes me one of his famous grins. Oh, we're just calling each other boyfriend now, aren't we? Good morning, boyfriend. You sleep okay? 
Yeah, about that though. Jin stiffens as if realizing that we're in his room, at his house. After a moment of silence, we can confirm there are noises in the kitchen. He groans. Well, looks like my sister is gonna know. I blush and pick at a stray thread on the sheets. I hadn't considered a walk of shame, but this almost seems just as daunting. Should I maybe sneak out the window? Why would you do that? I don't want to make it awkward. I think you sneaking out the window would make it awkward. Haru, I love you. Plus, we have nothing to be ashamed about. Trust me, Ayumi isn't going to care. Thankfully, Jin's room has an in-suite bathroom. So we both take showers without having to sneak into the hall. When I slip into my clothes from the previous night, I can feel my cheeks growing hot. It's so obvious. How? We wear the same thing every day. The house smells heavenly. On the dining table, there's a mountainous stack of pancakes in three place settings. I can feel myself growing redder, but I don't see Ayumi anywhere. Looks like she's feeling better. I'll say. There's syrup and jam and the pancakes even have chocolate chips in them. I'm drooling. All of a sudden, Ayumi pops out from behind the counter and confetti is laying everywhere. Good morning! Ah, she grins at us like the cat that ate the canary. I didn't know you were having a sleepover last night. How fun! I want to sink into the floor. I feel super mortified. Oh, come on, Ayumi. Can't you see you're making Haru uncomfortable? She sighs. I'm just teasing. You're a family, don't you know? I don't make chocolate chip pancakes for just anyone. Come on, but you eat them before they get cold. Tears well in my eyes as the embarrassment rolls away. I feel so happy that I want to explode. I spend the morning eating pancakes and laughing and feeling the best about myself that I have in years. I finally belong. Aww, Haru. It's the end of the semester. I managed to get all through all of my classes with good grades. Even with a few absences early on. As it turns out, I really love acting in all of my classes. Things have been great with Jen. We hang out nearly every day, and he was true to his word with Ayumi and quit his job at the nightclub. He even cut his hours at the hospital. We all spend a lot of evenings together. I might end up moving in with him in the future. It seems like a big step, but I'm there all the time anyway. We already feel like a happy family. I have unfinished business with my family back at home. I'm free! Free! It's nice to have a week off of school, isn't it? I'll say. Some of those exams were brutal. I chew on my bottom lip and Jin's expression softens. What is it? I might not be around for a few days. Oh? Why not? I think that this time would be best to go see my mom in Ryu in my... And Tatsuya, since I already have time off. Jin shuffles from one foot to the other. Well, are you sure you want to go alone? What if Ayumi and I come with you? What? I know how hard it is for you to go back there. And now is the perfect time. Ayumi's on break too. I have a few days off and... We can take a train up. It'll be perfect. You're always there for me, Haru. Let me be there for you. I can feel myself tearing up at how sweet the offer is. I really don't want to go alone. Besides, it'll be a good chance to let my mom meet my new boyfriend and let my family see me as I really am. Thank you, Jen. He kisses me softly. Of course. 
Two days pass, and we make the necessary arrangements. Ayumi is excited to ride on the train, and we all hop on for the long ride. I wish I could share her enthusiasm. Now that we're on the way, I'm full of anxiety. Jin holds my hand the entire train ride, as the city fades behind us. When Ayumi gets bored of looking out the countryside, she turns to me. So, what's your family like? You told me about your mom and your little brother. What's your stepdad like? I don't mean to, but I flinch. Both of them notice. Tatsuya? He's your typical man's man, I guess. We don't really get along. I just usually stay out of his way. Do you not like him? Ayumi. I wouldn't say that. More like, he and I just aren't on the same wavelength. I don't think he gets me. Because you're gay? Ayumi. What? I'm just asking questions. It's what kids do. Ask the most awkward and appropriate questions. It's okay. I don't know. Maybe. He's just so stereotypically hetero that I guess we don't mesh well. He's a little intimidating. Hmm. Well... We try to talk, but there's nothing to ever talk about. It's just awkward. Is he why you left your hometown, or is it those high school bullies you talked about? Jin stares at her, then looks over at me curiously. I can feel myself turning red. Well, mostly it was the latter. Being gay was a big part of it too. It's not exactly smiled upon where I come from. Oh. She can sense the turn in the mood and looks around. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. She jumps up and darts down the aisle before either of us can say a word. There are a few moments of silence. Jin must think I'm pretty pathetic. I'm sorry that people were so awful to you in high school. Do you want to talk about it? I sigh. There's not much to talk about. There was this boy in high school that I fell head over the heels with. He, we told him this already. <laughs> I fell head over heels in love with. The only problem was, he was a massive jerk. And I didn't know it. But I couldn't help myself. I thought that maybe I could write him an anonymous letter, and the stars would align, and maybe we could live happily ever after, or at least my feelings would be out there. But, one of his buddies recognized my handwriting. There was no going back. So I asked to talk to him after class, and he told me I was disgusting. I became the gross gay guy who was denied in front of everyone. He had always seemed so nice, but I guess that was only to straight people. I laugh, but it sounds harsh and hollow. Jin is silent, and when I finally sneak a look up, he looks absolutely livid. What an awful piece of trash. I'm so sorry that happened to you, Haru. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. That's not even the end of the story, but I noticed that Yumi's skipping back up the train aisle, so I tersely nod. Anyway, that was why I got out, and that's why I'm better off for it. But here we are, going back. This definitely is how I imagined, like, some little old school... Not old school, like, little small town sort of area. Finally, we're here. I see a couple of familiar faces, but no one stops to talk with me. Maybe because I'm with Jin and Ayumi. Honestly, I'm pretty happy that they leave us alone. Well, here we are. It's cute. It is. There was something about this house that always made me feel safe and happy as a child. But as I grew up, the feeling went away. I shake the memories off. Just wait till you see the inside. My mom goes nuts for decorating. It's, a uh, Colorful. Yeah. A random ship in the bottle. Got some censored fruits over here. Interesting colored couch. Everything looks just like I remember it. When we moved here, 
My mom drew a picture of how she wanted everything to look. She ordered new furniture and I helped her paint the walls. Jen and Ayumi look around smiling. It's really nice. Your mom has good taste. Uh, it's kind of iffy to me. It's just a personal thing though. There's a cop movie playing on TV which means... Haru, I don't know who this is. Oh, it's Ryu. A small body slams into mine, and for a second, I lose my balance. I recover looking down at my brother's round, smiling face. He has our mom's summer sky blue eyes. He jumps up and down, his small hands clutching my back. I was, I was waiting for you. I knew you'd come today. Mommy told me. Is that so? Did you miss me? Oh, Of course they did. I miss you so much. I want to show you my drawings. Did you get the violet crayon? Oh, when I was going home, I found this awesome rock. Okay, let's uh, focus on one thing at a time. Tell me, did you fall down again? That band-aid... Yeah, I was running yesterday and I tripped. I cut myself. I see. I hope it heals fast. But promise me not to get hurt while I'm here. Ryu giggles and nods vigorously. I promise. Okay. Who's that? My brother stares at Jin and Ayumi. Oh, this is Jin and his sister, Ayumi. Jin is my, uh... Friend? I mean, they are really good friends. Jin and I both flush red. Say, is mom here? Oh, this is Tatsuya. That's not really how I pictured Tatsuya. Uh, dang it. Tatsuya. Hi, Haru. I'm so focused on Ryu that I don't notice his dad. He must have come from the kitchen. He hasn't really changed since I last saw him. He's the same prime example of masculinity. Square jaw, broad shoulders, and bulging muscles. Needless to say, he's totally my type. I had a hard time when he first moved in with us. Good thing I had lots of magazines stashed away to uh, alleviate that hard time. Oh, Haru. <laughs> Even as a kid, you were the same, huh? Uh, hi. I glance at the TV. What are you watching? The usual. Just an old cop flick. Thrilling conversation we're having. Um, what's it about? It's, uh, well, this cop tries to... Track down a criminal who hurt his partner and he gets framed. People from his own department chase him. He has to avoid them and still catch the real killer. But it turns out... I assume this is his mom. Honestly. We all look up. My mom is coming down the stairs. I swear, if I hear another gunshot, I'm going to call your department and make them unretire you. Hi, honey. I, uh, forgot to turn the volume down, sorry. Tatsuya smiles sheepishly at my mom. She sighs. Then she turns to me and gives me a big hug. It's good to see you, Haru. Yeah, you too. This is Jen and his little sister, Ayumi. He's, uh, my... friend? Boyfriend? Listen, we come this far. We're not going to say he's our friend. If I choose this, is Ayumi going to die again? Ugh. Boyfriend. He's my boyfriend. I didn't come here to hide who I am anymore, so I'm going to start with being honest, no matter how scary it is. Jin is my boyfriend. We've been going out for a while now. I wanted you all to meet him. Suddenly it's all too much, and I feel terrified. What if my mom is angry, or my brother thinks I'm gross, or, or... And then Jin puts his hand on mine, and my fears start to melt away. That's right. This is scary. It can be scary. But Jin is here for me, just like I am there for him. This isn't going to change. 
I glance up and my mom is smiling softly. Are you going to get married? Oh, my brother is regarding me with the seriousness of a six-year-old. Well, we've only been together for a couple months, so I don't know about that. Maybe someday. Would that be okay with you? I glance over at Jin, expecting him to be joking, but there's an easiness to him that makes me blush. As if he's actually considering marrying me someday. Ryu seems to think about it for a second. If Haru likes you, you must be nice, so it's okay. Ryu contemplates something and then excitedly beams at us. Does that mean I'm going to be an uncle? I love this kid. Ah, uh, Ryu is the best. Ayumi bursts out into giggles and I can't help but follow suit. Jin starts laughing as well. Pretty soon everyone in the room is laughing except for you. Listen, we can adopt. What? What's so funny? A few seconds ago, I was terrified out of my mind and now I can't stop laughing. I'm afraid that's not how it works, bud. So, I won't be an uncle? I'm afraid not. At least not anytime soon. Tatsuya needs to stop talking. Ha ha ha. It's great to meet you, Jin. Likewise, sir. Please, call me Tatsuya. They shake hands. I notice my mom looking at me. She gives me a big smile and I can feel my cheeks heat up. The hardest part is now over. Mom, you're not angry, right? Things won't get awkward. Honey, all I care about is that you're happy. I'd be a bad mom if I didn't allow you to date someone good for you just because they were a boy. I love you. Thanks, mom. I love you too. You must be hungry. I was just about to go make dinner. Why don't you rest and show Jin your old room? You want to hang out, Ryu? Yeah, let me show you my rock. Ayumi flashes me a look like I owe her one, but honestly, she looks like she's having a good time. Okay, thanks. We'll be in my room. So this is Haru's room. Very colorful. Honestly, I thought there'd be more posters of Sailor Noon. I am amused by the fact that this is a rainbow. And we do have lots of little robots. I like that they put a shadow here where the robots are. Jen looks around my room in awe. I know, I know, it matches my hair. No, it's great. Don't show sister. She'll never leave. Huh. <laughs> my mom would probably actually love having another kid around to spoil. Jen sits on my bed and stares at all the giant robot figurines. All There's like four. You weren't kidding when you said you loved giant robot shows. Yeah, I guess there was something comforting about the thought that normal guys could pilot these big pieces of armor and nothing could hurt them. Maybe that was me projecting that I just didn't want to be hurt. I don't know. Makes sense to me. When life keeps knocking you down, sometimes it's hard to keep taking the punches. You want to protect yourself. Maybe that's why I got so focused on work. Hell, I know it is. But... You don't have to worry about me, your mom, Tatsuya. They seem pretty cool. At least, they're not trying to throw us out. I think everything is going to be okay. It doesn't mean that the past is going to stop hurting right away. It'll get easier to go over in time. I really want to hug Jin, but then I feel like I could do more than that. I sigh. Too bad my door doesn't have a lock. Jin grins roguishly at me. Naughty, naughty. Still, I don't know if I'm that adventurous. I lower my voice to whisper, still grinning. Don't worry, I'll be good. Well, I guess that I can be too. It's not like I could do anything in here anyway. Imagine how my magical girl poster would feel seeing me debauched by you. So we know who's uh, the Neko in this relationship. 
I wouldn't want to scar those giant robots either. We settle on a hug and soon smell dinner wafting into the room. Mom makes my favorite dish, spaghetti carbonara. We don't talk much at dinner, but I don't mind. I don't feel like I have to crack jokes every second anymore, so I can just enjoy the companionable silence. Dinner was great, Mom. Thanks. It was delicious. I love if you gave me the recipe. It's super good. Of course, sweetie. I'm glad you all liked it. Do you, you want to see my drawings and my rock now? Sure, lead the way. We spend the day playing with my brother. Sometimes we return to the living room to listen to my mom talk about the town and her new job. Of course, whenever I try to talk to Tatsuya, the conversation falls flat, but I'm used to it. It's evening. Jin and I tuck my brother into bed. He doesn't even demand I read him a story. He must be exhausted. Ayumi curls up in a sleeping bag on the floor, and we wish her goodnight, but she's already crashed as well. We return to the living room. We're just pretending it's a spotlight. It's fine. Mom and Tatsuya stand in the middle of the room, whispering to each other. When they see us, they immediately stop. They turn to face us, their expression serious. Suddenly, all the years of fear and shame come back, crashing down on me. Do they pretend everything was fine because my brother was there? Are they about to tell me I'm not welcomed here anymore unless I change my ways? Will they say I'm disgusting? No. Mom said she accepted me. But maybe Tatsuya brainwashed her. Maybe all this time he was just pretending to tolerate me while waiting for the moment to strike. Haru. Yeah? There's something you need to know. Mom glances at Tatsuya. He nods, and she turns away from us, approaching the TV stand. She opens the cabinet and retrieves something, then walks back to us. Her steps are slow and hesitant. Then she faces me again. She's holding something pressed closely to her chest. Her skin is pale, her face tight with concern. Her eyes search mine. Finally, she takes a deep breath and gives me a plain black CD case. The label reads, Time Capsule, Interview 11, Haru Amari. A sudden rush of panic hits me. Like a well-aimed bullet, I stare at the CD. Where? My voice comes out barely audible, so I clear my throat and try again. Where did you get that? The girl who's interviewing her, her parents gave it to us. They told us we need to see it. And have you seen it? No, we haven't. We thought you might want to show us yourself. It's okay if you don't want to. The tape is yours. You can throw it away, destroy it, do whatever you want. I look at mom. She gives me a reassuring smile, but her hands are still clasped around her stomach. Tatsuya walks up to her and puts his hands on her shoulder. He squeezes it. You don't have to make the decision today, Haru. Yes, of course. Take as long as you need. We'll wait. He says it like he means it, and I feel stupid for thinking, even for a moment, that he wanted to get rid of me. I... I need to think about it. We understand. Haru? Haru. What? Are you okay? I stop and look at him. I realize that I've been pacing. I take a deep breath and count to ten. Shakily I look at the CD. My pathetic high school life wrapped up in one terrible class project. Who would ever want to show it to anyone? Well, I'm having lucid nine flashbacks. Where, uh... I thought the ending came a lot sooner multiple times than it actually did, and that's what happened in this one, but that's fine. This is a good game. I'm enjoying it, and it seems like we're getting into some interesting parts. So we'll end here, and I'll see you next time. If you have already liked, comment, and subscribe, I am Tatocat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.